I know that face. That's Joe Colangelo, right? Hey, yeah. Uh, you're gonna sit in the uh, intersection news desk. Yeah, that's right. Excellent. Uh, tell me, what can we hope to learn by watching that segment? I'm um, going down to talk about data and its impact on events. Oh, one of us is going down. <sighs> well, I for one look forward to watching that segment. Thanks. And I hope you do too. Appreciate that. Bye, Joe. Thank you for joining us. We are speaking today with Joe Colangelo. He is the founder and CEO of Bear Analytics. Joe, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Let's begin with, tell us a little bit about Bear Analytics. Sure, so Bear Analytics, we're a DC-based uh, data consultancy. Uh, we work with event organizers, nonprofits, trade associations, uh, to help them drive insights through the data and a lot of times that they're already collecting right now. We predominantly work with uh, larger events um, to allow to you know really help the attendee experience and help the event organizer capture more of the marketplace uh, that they're trying to capture with their event with their brand. You use the word data. Yeah, look out. I was just going <laughs> to say, do, does that scare a lot of people? That's yeah, that's usually where we start um, because in a lot of instances, organizations are already uh, collecting a tremendous amount of information, and they have been for a little bit now. Uh, that's the one great thing about the technology advancement in our space. It's as, as events and event organizers adopt uh, newer and more cutting edge technologies, the flow of information is larger, the quality of the data is higher, and it's coming from more places than it ever has in the past. And I know you call kind of data as the DNA of the organization. What does that mean? Well, you have uh, a lot of smart folks that are in management functions, and really the state of the art to inform them on what's going on at their event has been surveys for a long time. And surveys are are terrific and even the technology and surveys are improving to get the results faster um, and to pinpoint uh, critical issues sooner to help again with the on-site or post-event experience. Uh, what we find is when you're talking about transactional data, so this data that's being generated by the technology, uh, you're able to get a richer sense of information that's not just from a sample, it's information that's being generated by the population. And we say it's your DNA because it's it's what makes the event the event, and oftentimes it really supplements the gut instinct that those managers um, and professionals know about their event. We're just able to quantify it. So the technology is, in a sense, creating more data. That's correct. The technology is creating more data. It's better data than it's ever been. So you're dealing with less dirty data, um, if you will, and you're able to tease out insights uh, from it that were never possible. I'll give you an example of that. Five, ten years ago, the state of the art for understanding who's walking in a room is just doing a badge scan. And a badge scan's great because in the before the badge scan there was the head count. And that's another level ahead of it. Now as we start to get into uh, beacon technologies and even some of the RFID technologies, you're able to start to see the flow into and out of a room, where people are congregating, how long do they stay. And if you can tie demographic information, typically found it during registration, back to all those behaviors, you start to see there are different uh, ways that sen senior folks in organizations or junior folks in organizations aren't consuming content. And that's one example of the many things that are possible now with emerging technologies. And how, how do you use that? I guess and you think of using it, do you need the technology in order to use the data as well? I mean, so there's cost kind of associated with that or no, they can use it in another way? Usually the primary application of the technologies is to perform some service that you're already you're already doing. So for example, event registration. You need to have an event registration vendor. Um, so you're already purchasing that. The byproduct of that is this rich information, this rich data set, especially if you have it for a number of years going back. So oftentimes data is not the primary focus. You don't have to buy a specific data technology. It's you're buying it for another purpose and the data is the byproduct. Sounds yeah. like by getting all of that data then you're able to really customize, personalize an experience and isn't that what it's kind of all about? Yeah, we look at events like fingerprints, just like event organizers look at their event experience like a fingerprint. We have yet to find you know, two events that collect the same type of information where the attendees behave the exact same way. There's no 
human behavior algorithm we can just put on top of it. So it's very customized. How do you get this information? I kind of, from a logistical standpoint, how do you collect this data? So the first thing we do is when we sit down with a prospect um, or an organization that's looking to kind of go down the data route is uh, we perform something called a data map. And it's a very simple, very easy exercise where it basically just takes an inventory. So when we go through and we say, where has this information lived historically? Where does it live this year? How much information is there and what is being collected? And is there a limit? I mean, do you need to be a certain size in order to collect the data? Can you know anyone do this and get some answers? Or It's, it's a good question. And uh, I think the short answer is kind of yes. If your event is on the smaller side, um, you know, 50 to kind of 500 people, you probably don't need to go through this in hugely intensive exercise. You're probably going to glean more from just doing uh, a survey. Is there a limit, a, a time limit of like when is the best time to get this data for something, an event, or when is the best time to capture it? It really depends on where the event is in their life cycle. So if the event just happened, for example, you probably want to start and say, okay, let's take a look at what's happened the last four or five years. Now that we're not really in show mode, um, we've been able to digest this last experience to really get a sense of here are the metrics uh, and the ratios that are driving uh, positive event outcomes, whether it's I want to create more revenue, I want to bring more attendees, I want to get a wider exhibit base, whatever your particular or organization's goals are, it's a much more tailored, personalized approach and you can really start to learn what are the levers I need to push to make sure I'm getting the outcome I desire. And this really could be uh the turning point in event. I mean, you, the, having that data, knowing how to use it, and what you can glean from that, could change an event, or could change kind of where you're putting your focus. Event Warrior has put so much of their time, energy, and heart into crafting these really awesome, like we're seeing here this week, these really awesome uh, event and attendee experiences. Why not go just a little step further and make sure that? you're able to maximize your opportunity when you have your constituency on site, making sure you have the right people, the right bodies, so you don't have a year that you know may not go as, as planned. So what would be your top tip? Top tip, creating a data map. It's up on our website, it's something that's free, it's super simple um, to do. That's probably your best place to start because you already know, a lot of times people know the questions. It would be great if I knew. The second step is what information are we collecting? Who owns it? Uh, whether that's an internal stakeholder or a vendor or a partner. And how much information is being collected and how long do we have it for? Joe, thank you so much for joining us. Great information. Again, speaking with Joe Cole Angelo of Bear Analytics today. A lot of great information about using analytics and helping you as you move forward in the future. Thanks again for joining us.